Thank you very much. <laughs> Michael, over to you. Here we go for your talk tonight on yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hi everyone. Um, well, some of you might remember me from the, I think it was a couple of months ago, I did a, t a talk um, on Amdram and that was the first time that I did a talk here and I think I already recognise a few of you from the last talk and yeah and I and I really enjoyed it that much that I thought I'd come back and do another one because I thought you know the feedback was just so, so good that I just thought why not so uh, the talk I'm doing is about hair it's n n not as random as it sounds it's actually a lot more to it than that and um, I'll be talking about uh, the history of hair you know why we you know uh, how uh, how the how we started to style our hairs right up to the to the current day and of course I'll talk a bit about hair in modern day society as well and why we style it the way that we do. Uh, the pictures you will see are quite random, if not a bit out there. So. Right, uh, the first one is, you know, why do we, why do we shave, why do we, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. I had a beard two days yeah. ago. <laughs> <laughs> why, 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 why. Yeah. <laughs> Why do we shave? Why do we um, grow out our hair? Well, because society says so, really. And so there's no, you know, law saying that we have to style it the way that we should. You know, it's a series of unwritten rules. But of course, there are a number of reasons on here, um, as you can very well see. Uh, the first one is work. Um, every workplace is different, uh, so some places can be quite uh, conservative, um, <laughs> uh, traditional in the sense of dress. I mean, for, 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 for example, uh, my dad's workplace, um, he is here, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's him there. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, his workplace is quite um, traditional in that there's you know, suits and ties for the men, and females uh, wear skirts. So yes, it's quite conservative, and that they even will wear ties in the summertime. So I heard. <laughs> Guy, I've got that right. Yeah, yeah that's right. That's <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Even at the height of summer. I mean, I don't think. Barbaric. Yeah, I, I know, I know. I don't think I'd cope. No, but then some, but some spaces like where I work, like the town art gallery, which are quite cash, uh, but as long as it's family friendly. For example, I have a T-shirt that I can't wear because it's you know, not family friendly, <laughs> uh, which I do wear, but I cover it up with a shirt. It's actually a Woody the Pooh t-shirt, uh, but, but it's actually a picture of Pooh Bear eating piglets. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you have Pooh Bear, and 
and then you, you know, who, who I think is supposed to be a zombie, and and he's holding a pig bit, right, and and his head is on the back of the t-shirt. <laughs> it, you, you, I'm sorry. <laughs> Your mum doesn't like it either. No, 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 no. It's not bad. Well, actually, there, there was a photo that I, uh, that we took. Uh, I think it was for your mum when you went up yeah. to Cumbria. And so we had to pose for this uh, family picture. And I was told that I couldn't wear that t-shirt because it just so happens that I was wearing that t-shirt on that day. <laughs> so I was censored. So I had to wear uh, one of my polo shirts. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, right, um, of course, uh, personal choice which I think speaks for itself. Um, that's unless you're being censored in family pictures, but <laughs> anyway. Uh, culture. Well, um, so that's, for example, the religion, uh, where um, uh, um, in Islam, you know, men tend to grow out their big, Beards and with uh, Buddhists, uh, there's the um, head shaving because it's part of their um, uh, ritual. So, for those reasons, that's why they do that. And then, then of course, the final one, which I think plays a big role, the media, um, particularly in the in this day and age where we have where a lot of people have this obsession with following all these uh, celebrities and the latest hairstyles and, you know, p particularly um, amongst uh, teenagers as well, b because they see all this all the time uh, via the internet and on social media. They, they see people like uh, the cast of Zowie, and you know, and uh, they'll probably think, "Oh, uh, I want to look like um, like um, Mark Wright." I don't, but then again, <laughs> I don't really understand why. Um, anybody would, but that's just me. But a lot of but 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 a lot of people in that age group they see all of this all the time. So uh, they face an awful lot of pressure as a result of that. And uh, and of course, I talked about uh, culture as well. And going back to history, uh, during the Holocaust, um, uh, when uh, uh, any um, Jewish people who were held in these camps, uh, they had to have their hair shaved off and their beards, so that uh, so it's to d distinguish them from everybody else, and to make it less hard for them to escape. They were told at first that it was so they wouldn't get lice. What they weren't told was that it was also... Uh, um, it was also uh, to dehumanise them. And so th there is that aspect of it. <laughs> yeah, it didn't really do that when I copied and pasted it. <laughs> this is the first time I've seen this. <laughs> I have actually seen this, 
but when I copied and pasted it, of course, they were still... <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, oh, it's probably not going to, to, to work then, but now it does. Let's just go away moments. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, the benefits to having hair uh, means better protection against the sun, so it stops us from getting sunburnt. So, with hair in place, uh, you know, uh, it would stop us from getting sunburnt. And, and, and the <coughs> follicles would then ensure that there is a healthy supply of blood vessels all over your body. And also acts as a barrier against uh, bacteria and other um, horrible bugs. And of course, it also helps in the healing process of small cuts and scrapes. So you would, I mean, even with hair in place, you would probably still get them, but probably, but they probably wouldn't be as they probably wouldn't be as bad if you, know, you didn't have any hair at all. Uh, so, the um, history of hair. Um, why do we style our hair? Um, it actually all dates back as far as the 16th century uh, when uh, a, when when Francis I um, burnt his hair and his beard uh, with a torch. Uh, of course, back in those days, it would you know torches would have been um, you know sticks with fire on top. Of course, and so um, he burnt his hair and his beard, and from that day onwards, um, he started to sport short hair, and of course a short beard. And be be because in those days, um, because in th th those days, um, everybody looked up to uh, monarchs and, and faithful And faith leaders. So that was that would have been the precursor to what we have now with the whole celebrity fame game. Um, so, so of course, um, so of course, um, in the case of women uh, with uh, ill. Elizabeth I as their monarch. Uh, women, women copied her natural pale complexion and red hair, and they sported red, red wigs. And in the case of makeup, uh, she would colour in her eyebrows, lips, uh, with alabaster pencils, and then she would apply a thin glaze of egg white paste to hold it all together. And of course, that was all long before the, before, uh, or what, before the cosmetics that we use now. And, yeah, of course, that's, uh, that, that's her right, right there on the right hand side. And it wasn't until the 1920s uh, that, uh, that the film first came out. So then there was the, so that, that was when people were exposed to the whole fame game. So the first uh, celebrities of the day started sporting these trends, like the bobbed hairstyles, and of 
calls for men. Uh, uh, side partings with Brilliantine. And so, and they were sported by, uh, well, by Rudolf F Valentino, who was one, one of the most famous stars of the 1920s. And all the way up to the, all the way up to the Rachel haircut uh, from, from, from friends. And, and of course in between, um, up until the 1960s, uh, that was when we all started to let, let ourselves go a bit with, you know, with the whole counterculture, hippie movement. So men started to grow out their hair and their beards. So, and then both men and females, that they all started to grow out their hair and starting to sport a more sport a more um, natural look, uh, which is very much um, anti-establishment, very anti, you know, very anti vogue in, in a way. And then of course that carried on up until the 70s uh, with uh, punk and all the way up to the 80s. And then in the 90s we have grunge, which I think would have been inspired partly by the um, uh, hippie movement in that, uh, you know, acts like, uh, like, uh, like, uh, Kurt Cobain started to sport a more natural look. So, again, it's going back to letting th themselves go a bit more. And, of course, I've already mentioned the sitcom Friends with the Rachel haircut, and of course, um, but by the way, that picture here was actually taken from Hair. So the title of my show was Hair, and and, and I thought, well, I've got to find a piece, uh, a picture from that show. So I thought, why not? And that's just where I got the info from. So I haven't been spending the last 10 minutes or so talking out of my bum. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh yeah, and I did know that that was happening as well. So, <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> Personally, in the words of Banana Rama, I was kissing Valentino by a crystal blue, blue Italian stream. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> sorry, I, I couldn't help myself there. I, I, I couldn't resist. Uh, questions? I, I saw a hand come up straight away, so uh, let's go to Ross. Hello. Um, I, I'm a middle-aged man with no hair on my head. <laughs> <laughs> we can see that. <laughs> Shining from here. You are, you are. Yeah, I'm a few of you. Sorry, I make most of it. <laughs> That's not a question. Uh, the question is this. I have, I have a short beard. I have a middle-aged man's uh, beard. But uh, at the moment, it's a very quite, quite a prevalent uh, fashion amongst the young men to wear beards. That, uh, the, the things that remind me of are, 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 are um, uh, uh, jihadis and 19th century Victorian politicians. Very long, like, big, serious yeah. beards. Young, young, can you explain the appeal of how this happened? <laughs> <laughs> well, why this sudden trend of beers? Any notes would be useful. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can think of the hipster. 
That's a good question. Um, I saw a uh, documentary on the hipsters. It was on B BBC Four some t t t time ago. Um, I don't claim to be a huge expert, but uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, I think it's j just a case of that they don't want to follow the mainstream, right. so they. Uh, so that they go, I mean, so that they would go against everything that's in the mainstream by, by, uh, by, by uh, borrowing stuff from the past. Right. So, uh, so for example, they would, would have been inspired by uh, the the Edwardian period, as you said. So, with a lot of, I mean, I always think a lot of, you know, sub cultures today, like the hipster, are being borrowed, I'd say, because there's not really anything original now, because it's all happened. Uh, that, that's just my opinion, but I think that's all open. So you, um, you, you mentioned the, the punk open. styling of the, the late 70s, so yeah. is, it, is it kind of a, a style of rebellion, you, 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 you think, the, the hipster and the, the, the big beards is a, yeah. is a style of rebellion against conformity? Yeah, yeah. they say that the, the, um, the hipsters and the, uh, are the um, children of the new romantic movement. Um, you know, not distant the ballet, are you? Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, I can't stand it. <laughs> <laughs> so, as, as, as they have great sort of bouffant hairstyles and things like that, they have different things that they have. Uh, that's what I was going to say. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah, that's okay. Did mm -hmm. ask answer? Sort of, yes. Um, <laughs> what, what do you advise on how to? I have, but because I um, always change my appearance um, all the time, so uh, some days I can be shaven, some days I can grow some stubble, so some days I might sport sideburns, you know, it, it's just, you know, some days I, I may even sport longer hair, shorter hair, you know, it's just, yeah, it, it just comes but it all goes naturally. Out, Sorry? It's not like you're identifying with a tribe so much more if you do. No, no, no. I just thought as, as the other way, like, if you, if you were millennials around. Um, <laughs> I, think, I mentioned, like, for example, as anecdotal, I used to have um, side side shaved undercut, so it was long on the top and then shaved on the sides, and then one day I just got, because well, I was kind of wearing it, and I just got bored and just kept going, and then I was number one, and that was me for the summer, and then I grew it out completely long until the winter, and so then I had short length there, and it's less about um, identifying more, so I, I, I feel like for some people, it's more how you feel instead of who, who you want to identify as, you don't, yeah. there's, there's a slight, leaning towards a le letting go of what your hair stands for and more the fact that you, it's something you play around with. So. Yeah. I've, got, I've got a question for you actually. Um, <laughs> you, you indicated that to, uh, until recently you had a beard. Yeah. 
Um, what made you shave it off? A uh, friend of mine jokingly said, Oh, I really want to shave your beard. And I said, Okay. And then she went, No, I'm clumsy. Don't, don't let me do it. I said, Well, you have to now. So, um, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. So she. So you so I didn't shave it. And then you you're kind, kind of got talked into it. Yeah, like, well, they, yeah. She, she also said she wanted a diet pink. And, and I was like, Pride is coming up. Yes. I said that. She's like, no, I can't do that. I'll shave it off. No, that was not so you, you, and you kind of indicated that when the, the, the hairstyle is you, you almost actively making sure that your hairstyle doesn't define your sense of style. Yeah, well, it, it, it depends. Whereas, because in the past it probably would have defined your sense of yeah. style. Mods and rockets. Yeah. In the car on the way here, I can see him in the rearview mirror, it's my son, right? And I was like, you look so happy. Any other questions <laughs> for Michael or, or, or indeed comments uh, on, on Michael's talk? Ruthann? I just want to dispute the whole there's nothing new because we have an ongoing bet in our house and I'm betting against all my kids mm -hmm. because I reckon there will come a time when women wear their hair like this. It's the only thing that is not properly being done by the bigger, and it's so obvious. It's such an obvious thing to start playing with a higher. Yeah. Uh, they, 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 so they, 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 Clearly, Ruth, and there are a large amount of men in this room that don't have that as an option. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lifestyle show. <laughs> so, um, if that's uh, if we have no further questions, I, I'm, I'm going to say thank you very much, Michael. Yeah. That was great. <laughs> and, and I'm, I'm going to say something that I said at the end of my talk for anyone that was unfortunate enough to be here to listen to me sprout on. Um, I spoke about my passion and, I, and I've heard people speak about their passions, at, at all of you from Bavards. Um, please, 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 if you have a passion, and I'm sure we all do, one day come up and stand up here and, and share it with us all. Because I would love to hear it. Um, I'm sure there are a great number of people out there that would love to hear it. So please, 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 because these evenings will only survive, uh, and it's a brilliant thing, I think, that Tim's done. These evenings will only survive if we have speakers that are brave enough to come up here and, and spend 15, 20 minutes of their time telling us about what they're passionate about. So um, that's, that's my final comment. Thank you all so much for attending tonight. Um, hopefully we've done Tim some justice tonight um, and, and hopefully his concept will, will grow. Thank you very much for your time, thank you very much for participating and, um, and give yourselves all a big round of applause.